This is a talk that I wanted to give for a long time, but it needed some preparation and analysis, which I finally got to doing. Um, we finally have estimates. We know how much money we need, which is detailed in the Gantt chart really nicely. So we know we, we need 500,000 for phase one, million and a quarter for phase two, and $650,000 for phase three off to build a parish hall. I'm giving you a handout. We have some. There's like three. So first thing that I wanted to see for myself was uh, what happened in the last, I don't know, 10, 13 years. I don't have a lot, so you probably have to share. To see what we've been doing, how much money it gave us, and um, just in general, like orient ourselves with what came in, what came out. Now we're looking at this sheet. So this is a more or less compilation of money that came in and came out of the building fund in the last 13 years. It's until July 23, but not much spectacular happened till the end of the year. So this is representative of what happened in that 13 years. So um, it is divided in two columns. So St. Joseph's Chapel and New Parish Hall, I set a date of October 1st, 2017 as a division line. So before that date, we were collecting money for restoration of the uh, chapel. After that date, that was the time when uh, Andrew Gould came here. You can have coffee and you can go behind to get food if you need food. Uh, when Andrew Gould gave his talk in October of 2017. So that marks the beginning of the parish hall era. Um, so when we're talking maintenance and operations, that's how I divide which, which, which column they go to. So that allows us to see where the money came from. The majority of dollars came from um, just general giving and fundraising. We want to see how effective any of those fundraising avenues are. So we have pledges, especially since 2018, we kicked off our fundraising and pledging campaign with uh, Frederica Matthews Green's talk. And people, there are some people who regularly put a certain number of dollars into building fund monthly, like for general fund, but for the building fund. There's also donations, non-pledge, we occasionally do various asks, like we need money to, I don't know, remove graffiti or pay so-and-so. So people do that. And then there we have fundraising. So we have different, and I will, I will break that down for you in a minute. There is Lowe's and Fishes mailing the first couple mails. This is the campaign where we send actual hard copy letter to people. Uh, the first couple mailings went to raise money for the building fund. So there was time, right now it goes into general funds, there was time when we had campaigns specifically for the building fund, loaves and fishes. Matching grants is the most successful category and that gives us an idea of that we raised a total of $800,000. Um, it how also, much, much? well the total is so there's a total under each column and there's a total under each category and $800,000 is the grant. The, the grant total okay. obtained into building fund in those 13 years. Now, 300 almost of those are um, grants from the county. So we have raised $500,000 and that's good news because we have already raised $500,000. So we've already done it. We know how to do this. We can do it again. Somebody, I was watching this um, money guy and somebody asked him how to make $10,000. He's like, do you know how to make $1,000? Yes, well, do that 10 times. So that's our strategy. We're gonna do this 10 times, but faster. Now we're gonna do this first three times and then more. Um, so, um, then in the, also in the bottom, there is uh, where the money went to. 
And they also like broken down by regular maintenance, <coughs> chapel restoration, uh, which is mostly grants and some of our own money a little bit, and parish hall building uh, until now. Now, next thing I wanted to see was, um, I'm gonna, this. I'm gonna do this for today so that you can look closer. Um, now we're gonna look at Holy Apostles fundraising strategy until now. So in broad uh, categories, the strategy looks like three um, categories of actions. So there is um, okay. first is the, what we what we normally see is the um, projects asks um, you know matching grants concerts or whatever whatever we do little things that we do that add up to money so um i looked up specific things how much money different things brought for example uh i didn't i didn't do email and post and and mailing uh they are in this column where you know donations non-pledge so they are effective Liana's concerts, I took out, she had three concerts over the years, two here and one at Martha's Vineyard. So, Liana doing this 10 times, it's $20,000, there you go. Uh, there's there continuous talks on Holy Apostles. I, I started to look at, Constantine Zalala's gave at least seven talks. Seven is what I saw. Uh, then there was Frederica Matthews Green, Ralph Sidway gave a talk. Those are talks that were specifically for fundraising. Sometimes there are people who talk who fundraise for themselves. No, those were for us. Um, not always they bring money, but they keep people aware and they keep people, they bring connections. So um, talks at other parishes. In 2018, Father George gave a talk at, Holy, at, at uh, St. John's. So he went and he and he gave a talk um, for the St. John's Parish about our chapel. That brought um, almost $2,500. So that's one way you go and ask established parishes and talk to them. Giving Tuesday in 2018, we had actually advertised the Giving Tuesday campaign. It's a Tuesday after Black Friday near Thanksgiving. And people donated via Facebook. That was over $6,000 for that one day. Um, yard sales, we had two, I do not recommend. Uh, there's so much work and there's so little money, but I put them here to let you know, don't, don't do that. <laughs> okay, matching grants. I have this really nice chart, which I personally like, which doesn't fit, but okay. So these are matching grants since um, since 2010 with the number so the blue is how much the match was sponsored the red is so the orange how much it was collected so we started with you know this is 5, 10, 40,000 is the top line so anywhere between 1, 2 and 5 we went like this for a while and then they started growing off the chart, so now we were, as of last week, out of $38,000, we had 15. We have eight days left, so we need the other $22,000, like now. So if you were thinking of donating, now is the time. We would really like it to see, go, go up to the match. Um, we were talking with the fundraising committee, you know, we would live through the experience of not meeting a match, but we would not like to. So please donate. Also, as I will be saying a little later, not all the money come from our parish inside. So if we cannot donate, we have to talk about it. Because 
this is a very important thing to not rely on, on money inside the parish. We need to ask and involve people from outside. Okay, so this is one avenue. Next thing um, is um, doing, inviting bigger donations. So this is just like here. It's not about asking, only asking. It's also about cultivating relationships. So Matushka Deborah has been in charge of that, or she's been, you know, the spearheading that. And we did receive out of those $500,000, over $100,000 came from two people. So there was this Greek lady who donated, loaned and then forgave the loan of $86,000. And then there is Mr. Michael who occasionally donates ten dollars or $12,000. So there are people who we like to know, people who we like to keep in touch with and be friends with and for them to be friends with us. And so people also donate expert services. We had people who were working for this project, experts who did not charge us. Mr. Filippelli was our historic consultant for many years. Mr. Shipley, law services, $400 an hour is not charging us. And Mr. Barkley, law services is also donating his time when we need him. So this is bigger donations. and. Um, Financial institutions. So this is the people like um, county for the banks. I mean, county for grants, and also working with the bank for mortgage. We had a meeting with them at some point. Now we have to have another actual meeting, for which we are almost. We almost have all the paperwork. Not yet, but we're getting there. Other financial institutions could be insert in this category, but we need people who would help with, for example, researching grants database, who would help identify opportunities for grants and for other sources of funding. So if you know of something like that, bring it to our attention. We will happily apply if we know where to apply. Um, okay, so this is what happened so far. And I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do going forward. <coughs> so the idea is to continue with this three um, you know revenue streams so many small things, bigger donations and bigger donations from um, non-individuals, from bank and such. For this, I was thinking about, you know, we're, I, it looks like we're going through a shift, growing, and um, there has to be this switch in approach. And so I made this slide called fundraising mindset. I think we have to come to terms with the fact that we're in this for the long term. And it's, you know, it's unsustainable to hold our breath and wait until we're done. This has to become our, you know, life for the next some years. So instead of really sprinting and, you know, burning out, waiting for that thing in the end, we need to make it a routine and a regular exercise because we need to build a parish hall and then we need to restore the chapel. So make it a new normal. And that is why um, one of the ways to you know, help people not burn out is to build systems. So uh, switching from person-based uh, activities like I come up with something and we run and do it. Two system-based activities. So everybody, we, we come up with, for example, a theme, for example. There is like a communication system and you know events system. So we know we need an event. So instead of you know sporadically coming up with events that are 
cl clumped up here and then there's nothing for a year and people forget about us in that year. We want to spread them out and do that in a more systematic way. So we want to make our fundraising regular, consistent, and effective by learning from what works and what doesn't. We also notice that every time we, I say we show up, so we do something, something happens. We have an event, we have a talk, we have, we do like anything to show up in the world. Something happens, we get connections, we get donations. So we just need to steadily keep showing up. And so building systems was my thought and a theme um, for doing this, but in a more systematic way. We want to use a uh, more professional software like MailerLite for email, like something more um, professional for task scheduling, like project planning and tracking, that we can have, we can manage volunteers, we can manage skills, we can manage timelines, so that it's more centralized and less reliant on people. Because the more codified, if you will, it is, the um, more we can explain, teach, delegate, and the less, you know, if I'm the only person who knows how to do this or who is willing to do something, then I, if I, if I am sick and willing, depressed, then I'm creating a bottleneck and nothing gets done. So this has to become a system that works, whether it's me or I am replaced by somebody else. And the church keeps going without relying on too much on each individual. Of course, um, we, same we would like for um, communications, follow up. So everything we'd like to automate more than we would do by hand and have it more regular, more systematic, more, you know, keep rolling, less burnout, more progress. Um, so that means there is a role for everyone. And that I, I made another handout. There's about 15, I think. So in this, um, with building, the, there will be a leadership, you know, if, if you are leading a, an event or if you're leading a masterclass, whatever it is, then we'll have, of course, people who will be in charge, but then we need a backing, a support by other people. So everybody is involved in a way. And there are different ways to be involved. For example, with the movie coming up soon, um, there are people who are organizing, people who are, you know, doing all the logistics, but everybody can take flyers and put them in your local, I don't know, Panera Bread or school or other community boards that you can think of so that people from outside our parish know if you're visiting a church, for example, next week, you can introduce the movie to them. So if there's an announcement on Facebook, share it. We need to spread the word about things. So the, the people who organize it provide an impulse, provide logistics, provide, you know, the thing. Having it spread out, inviting other people. That's a communal event. That's everybody's in charge. You can volunteer for a task or for individual project. For example, now we need internet on the property, internet here, security system on the property. If somebody wants to research and coordinate with us to do that, that's one thing to do. You can propose a lead an activity. Um, Matushka Joanna proposed we have a movie. We like the idea, we made it happen. Or you can lead an activity, like if you have something that you can teach, you can host a master class, and we can help you with organizing. Uh, invite people from outside, sell tickets, whatever it is we need to do to make it a fundraising event, support you, come up, propose, lead, and such. Uh, also, this organizing always needs extra hands, extra talents. There's always place to write, to edit, upload, download videos, to do stuff. And um, 
we have had in the past people provide their talents to and, and donate a part or all of the proceeds, like concerts. I did coaching for a cause. Evie did text preparation, sold books. You know, you can cut hair if you want. But so there is something that everybody can think of the way to contribute. And then we put it in a big systematic master plan. And also, um, regularity means it's predictable. People know we have Blini every, every year. People start, you know, calling and pre-ordering way in advance. If people know something is happening regularly, they will count on it. They will come, they will, you know, expect it, they will participate. So that's going forward. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do $500,000 several times and we'll be done. So we did it. First time we did it, it was several years, but we, it was, it was a learning curve. Now we know what works. Now we know what, how it works. And now we know how to put it in a system to keep going with that. Question. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I think that, yes, everybody take to heart what she said and think, what, what can I do for my... Right. Can we move right on to Sunday school? Yes, definitely. No. <laughs> Absolutely. Amanda, you said you love Sunday school. I won't 